charge distributions. In this video, we're going to talk about charge distributions, the fields that establish themselves around those charge distributions, and then end with a recipe for calculating the fields around any charge distribution that you might be given. Now in this video, I'm just going to present the equations. And in examples that follow this, we will derive all of those equations. Charge distributions. The first charge distribution really isn't even a charge distribution at all, but it's worthy to talk about to see the parallels in the equations, but it's just a single point charge. And the size of this is infinitely small. It contains no volume. And since it's infinitely small, it really does not make sense to talk about a charge density. So really we just have total charge describing it. If there is multiple point charges, well, we would sum the charge of each of the little ones. And if there's multiple point charges and we wanted the electric flux, we would calculate the electric flux associated with each small charge and add them all together. The next is a line charge. And you can imagine in your mind starting with a point charge and extruding that along one dimension. And so the total length of this might be L. Since there's now a line, it makes sense to talk about a charge density. And anytime we hear a parameter with, or a, a label with density in it, we know that there's an integral hiding behind it to somehow add it up to get a total. So charge density is the charge in coulombs distributed over the length of the charge distribution. So it has units of coulombs per meter. Now, if we want to get total charge, we need to integrate that. So that is a line integral of the charge density times the differential length. So we're going to integrate along the entire length, no matter how that might meander, but we integrate along that whole thing and we're integrating that charge density the whole way. Now, when the charge density is a constant or it's uniform over the whole length, well, the total charge becomes very simple. It's just the charge density times the total length of that charge distribution. Total charge, a little bit more complicated, but we're essentially integrating the electric flux at each differential piece of that line. Surface charge. In our minds, we can start off with a line charge and then extrude that along another dimension to get a surface charge. And so our rho L, describing the charge density in coulombs per meter, becomes a rho sub S with units of coulombs per meter squared. And so a size of a sheet might be length L and width W. To calculate total charge, it is a surface integral, so it's a double integral. And so we'll do a double integration of the surface charge density times the differential surface. In the special case where that surface charge is uniform or a constant, the overall charge is just the surface charge density times the surface area S. And then the total electric flux is also a double integral over the total surface of the, of the charge distribution and we're integrating little differential point charges, if you will, and integrating those up over the whole surface. Last, we have a volume charge. So in our minds, or in my mind, I start off with a surface and extrude that in the remaining dimension. And if we distribute charge over that, we now have a volume charge density. So we're converting the surface charge density, which had units of coulombs per meter squared, to a volume charge density, coulombs per meter cubed. And I'm doing this to show the progression from point to line to surface to volume and how the units track that. So in terms of size, length L, width W, height H, let's say. To calculate total charge, we integrate through the volume. So that is a triple integral of the charge density times the differential volume. In the very special case, where the charge density is a constant or is uniform throughout the entire volume. It's just the charge density multiplied by the volume. 
And then total electric flux is another triple integral of these little differential volumes sort of acting like point charges to get the total electric flux. In this one slide, it will be a summary of everything we just talked about, starting with a point charge, how, what describing the charge, how to get the total charge and the total field. So we had a point charge, we had a line charge, a sheet charge, and then a volume charge. And that's why I like to include the point charge in this discussion. It is not a charge distribution, but I think it's neat to see the parallels through the equations. Fields around charge distributions. So we start off with a point charge, and we're very familiar with this. The fields diverge from a positive charge, and they're in the radial direction, and of course they would converge to a negative charge. So it's clearly a positive charge that we're showing here. An infinite line charge. Notice this is uniform in the direction of the line charge. Now this is a straight line charge. If it were to curve and meander, I think it would change that picture a little bit. But for a straight line, it is uniform in that vertical direction. And the field emits radially out from that line charge. And in this case, notice the decay is just one over rho. It's not a one over R squared, and that's because there's really only one plane where the energy can distribute itself. When the energy distributes itself over an increasing spherical area, that's the one over R squared or rho squared in this case. But it's uniform in the Z direction, so it can only spread out within a plane, and so we only get a one over rho dependence. And of course, like other charges, this extends out uh, infinitely, I'm only showing so far here. And then we have an infinite surface charge. A couple interesting things about this. What I find striking is that it is uniform. No matter how far away from the surface you are, it's the same electric flux. And how are we supposed to describe that? How do we explain that? It seems like the farther away we get, it should decay. Well, think of this as scalability. If you're like in a CAD program and you're zooming in or zooming out, if you have this infinite sheet charge and you zoom in and you zoom out, that picture looks the same. You really can't tell the difference. And so in fact, that's exactly why this works. And so we have a constant electric flux no matter how far we are away from that surface. And so it's the surface charge density divided by two. Why the divided by two? Well, it also creates a field on the other side. So you can roughly think of it as half the energy. We'll end this by talking about a recipe to calculate the field around charge distributions. It's a general recipe that we can apply to anything and we will when we go through the examples. So here is our recipe. The first thing is to draw the problem and label all of the dimensions, all of the different parameters, if you know the permittivity, uh, dimensions of everything. So sketch it and draw it. That is step one. The next thing you'll do is choose a coordinate system that will make the math the easiest. So if your structure looks very square and Cartesian, well, Cartesian coordinates is probably the easiest system. If you're analyzing something that looks like an extruded tube of some sort, well, cylindrical coordinates is probably going to be the easiest. If it looks spherical, then spherical coordinates would probably be the easiest. The next thing is to write the general equation. And in fact, you could do step three before you do step two because the general equation is independent of the coordinate system that we chose. When we start plugging expressions in and numbers, then we'll have to know the coordinate system. But we can just write the general equation. If we're doing a line integral over a line distribution or we have a sheet charge, so we do a surface integration or a volume charge and we have the volume integral. So we just write the general integral. At this point, we'll fill in expressions for anything we have in the integral. Now, it may be that one of those terms is our unknown and of course we won't put an expression in for it then, 
But if we have expressions, maybe the surface charge density is a function of position across the surface. We can plug that in. We have our differential length, differential surface, differential volume, and depending what coordinate system we chose, we can put in expressions for that as well. So we plug in as much information that we have. The last thing with the expressions there, and we've chosen our coordinates, we choose the limits of the integration. And we choose those limits so that we cover the entire length, surface, or volume without any voids or overlaps. Once that's written, the electromagnetics really is done. It just becomes a math problem to work through the integration. And then we get the final answer. With the final answer, well, we can interpret that. Maybe we can plot it, maybe we can draw it or think about it or do something with it. So all of the examples that follow, we will apply this same recipe.